obtain protection against fallout and as far as possible against heat and blast, you should now select and fortify a room in which to shelter, both during the attack and during the period of intense radiation that may follow. The penetration of harmful radiation is cut down by heavy and dense materials such as brick, concrete, and earth. The more, therefore, of these materials you can put between yourself and the fallout, the greater the protection you will obtain. The fallout will not get inside a house that has its windows and doors shut and has not been damaged by the blast. But it will settle on the roof and around the house. It is the radiation from this external fallout that endangers anyone inside. Now the choice of a fallout room. A basement or a cellar will give you the best protection and is the most suitable as a fallout room. Many houses will not have a basement or a cellar, but you can still find a room in your house which will give you protection from fallout. Remember that the more material there is between yourself and the fallout, and the further you are from the outside walls and the roof, the better the protection you will obtain. You can see why this ground floor room gives the best protection against fallout. It has only one outside wall, with the other walls either connecting inside the house or with the house next door. The room is also shielded by the houses across the street, which give it extra protection. The radiation from fallout can come from an appreciable distance, so this makes the front room more suitable than the back room, which overlooks a wide area and is far more exposed. If you live in a modern concrete block of flats of five or more floors, unless there is a basement, the best protection is given by the middle floors. If your home is in the upper or lower parts of the building, it would be best if you made arrangements to join the families living in the middle floors. In no circumstances should the top stories be used. In a block of flats with four stories or less, or one which has wooden floor joists, the best protection will be on the ground floor. A room should be selected in the same way as for a house, with not more than one outside wall, and with the most protection from neighboring buildings. Prefabricated houses or bungalows give little protection from radiation. If you live in one, you should try and join friends or neighbors whose houses give better protection from fallout. If this should not be possible, there are other steps you can take which will be described later. Wherever you live, when you have chosen your fallout room, it should then be modified to improve the protection it can give you. The windows will be the weak point and will have to be blocked in with some heavy material. Using sacks or sandbags, which should be about two-thirds filled, you can block the windows from the outside. Here, they are piled on strong tables until the whole window is blocked. Alternatively, you can fill boxes or other containers with tightly packed earth. If you can't block up the windows from the outside, pieces of heavy furniture should be positioned in front of the window and then packed with earth or books. A second method you could use is to remove the window altogether. Fill the gap both on the inside and the outside with planks or boards. These rest on the windowsill and should be bolted or wired together. As you build them up, you should fill the space between the boards with tightly packed earth. Thirdly, after removing the window frame, you could fill the space with bricks. A double layer is possible. Both these methods are as effective as sandbagging and may be the most suitable for your house. You can make the fallout room more effective by blocking the outside door and any windows in the passage leading to your room, by treating adjoining rooms in the same way, and finally, by thickening the outside walls. By constructing a core or heavily protected shelter, you can greatly improve your protection for the first few hours when radiation is at its greatest intensity. This is especially important for those of you living in a bungalow with no alternative shelter. There are several simple kinds of shelter core you could make. Here, 
Two doors are leaned against the wall, leaving a space in which the householder and his family can sit. And then bags of earth are placed over the top. Here the floorboards are taken up and a trench is dug under the floor. Ensure that it is in the corner furthest from the outside wall. You could also use a cupboard under the stairs with sandbags outside the door and on the stairs. For some of you, it will not be practicable to build a shelter indoors, but a trench dug outside your home would give good protection. It should be deep enough to stand in and the sides should be shored up. The trench should be covered with planks or other available material strong enough to support at least two feet of earth. Don't forget to leave an entrance with a movable cover. In one or other of the ways you have just seen, you should now take steps to protect yourselves against the hazards of a nuclear attack.